Welcome to the shooting show. This week, Mark Gilchrist is intercepting crows that pose a disease risk on a local farm. Rooks, jackdaws and carrion crows are all on the shooting list. Plus Byron Pace gets all ballistic with gecko ammunition. It might be barely 3am, but we're already out. Setting up for a day at the Crows with Mark Gilchrist. We're on Romney Marsh, trying to kill some of the crows that are in the silage clamp uh, in a farmyard, and they're also going into the feeders and uh, nicking the food out of the feeders. No, I didn't go to sleep last night. Well, um... What do I do? I had to go and do a bit of a walk round for rabbits on a place where it seems to be a store of my life at the moment, where I was only going to get ten. I got six or something like that this morning. Uh, so that meant I needed to leave the house at quarter past one. So it didn't really seem like a lot of point in going to sleep. I like to get an early start this time of year, especially in a farmyard, because the farmers will probably start coming in about 7.38 eight o'clock and um, you know they start feeding so it normally pushes the crows out um, they're often up at first light at this time of year um, especially if they've got you know youngsters there's other places I shoot crows where the afternoon is better but you've got to look at you've got to see what you've got to be there when the birds are there and they're here first thing in the morning so we've got to be here first thing in the morning it's as simple as that Sorry, wasn't a lot of warning there. Archers worked pretty well though, didn't they? <laughs> I think we might be in the wrong place here. I'm going to just give it another 15 20 minutes here. What I was hoping to see was quite a lot more birds coming up and coming straight into where we are now, which they're just not doing at all. in which case we want to be further over that way to get the flight line of exiting birds. I did rather uncharitably put us in the best place and my friend in what I thought was going to be the second best place. If this doesn't change, we'll move over there just to get more of a flight line of the birds coming out. Also, we can see over the top of the roof, so we can see birds coming. We've got a, a few carrion crows, not... Not many, but it's it's mainly um, jackdaws and and rooks uh, and the odd sort of feral pigeon, magpie, that sort of carry on. But it's it's uh, it's predominantly jackdaws in this farmyard. Jackdaw, as a rook, you tell that he's got the ball bit around the around his beak, and then the crow's got the feathers running down the beak, and if, uh, rook's got a sort of purpley tinge to his crown. They just they just make a mess. They, they obviously defecate everywhere. Apparently they do carry a disease that they, they spread through their droppings by putting it in water troughs. Um, but they also, you know, they're pecking holes in, this, in the, um, the top wall and over the silage. And if you've got bales of silage, they, you know, they, they peck holes in that. And obviously it doesn't, uh, silage doesn't keep as well if it's not sealed properly. Um, so yeah, those are the main problems that they cause. They've got better eyesight um, than, than pigeons, in my opinion. Um, but I, whenever I build a hide for anything these days, I try and use two or three layers of netting. Um, I think a hide that you can see through is, is useless. And just, uh, you know, I can see the dog moving. I can see you moving. 
um, and I try and just just break it up with branches and you know make it look. Mike might be short on luck, but it's a different story for Harry, who is getting good numbers of crows over his position. Another one approaches directly overhead, as Mark looks on with envy. Mark's shooting buddy Harry makes it look easy with Ely. He favours VIP steel, whereas Mark is using Ely Grand Prix that have stood the test of time. I don't think they're hard to kill. I normally, for the crows, use um, 28 grams and that, you know, kills them no problem at all. I think you've got to have a, a long, slow, deliberate swing, a little bit like, you know, they say you should do on geese. So you go up on the bird, stay on it, stay on it, and then just gradually pull through and pull the trigger. Whereas obviously on a pigeon, it's a much quicker, you're up on it, and, and the whole thing, you know, it's, it's quicker and it's more of a flick. Whereas on the crow, it's very, very slow, very deliberate. That's how I do it, and it, and it, it works well for me, but it's, it's, you've got to pick what works for you, I think, really. Mark has finally had enough and decides a change of location is in order. Setting up the hide at the new spot, he's hopeful of a bit more interest from the crows. And early indications are that his hopes might just be fulfilled. Up high. The Ely Grand Prix loads make short work of the incomer, but that's all we're getting as it's soon quieter than ever. It's not long before Mark is packing up at this location too. Good to hear that Harry's still having a good day as I'm packing up. <clears throat> Dawn, go and get that crow. Go on, sausage. Go, go on. Go on, it's in there somewhere. Go on, get on, where is it? Idiot dog. Go on. With a bit more encouragement, Mark's dog realises she's just not there to look at the scenery, and Julie obliges. With that, the day well is just about yeah. done. The old decoys didn't do a lot of work, did they, Dawn? Um, I. I there's a lot more crows here than this, so just, I think they found something else. But while Mark is moaning, Harry's still shooting and changes to his side by side to make things even more challenging. As long as you're having a good morning, that's all that counts, Harry. My most successful crow day was, in, was actually in Ireland. That was, that was an unbelievably good day. Um, but, you know, the farmer asked me to, to come. I'd like to have waited another week, I think. But, you know, he's asked me to come. We've come along and done it. Uh, I mean, I should think Harry will get to 50. I've had six. I mean, 60 crows is, you know, will make him happy that they're not coming in and making a mess in his farmyard. You know, the same farmer asked me the other day to go to a field. I knew I was only going to get 10 pigeons, and I, I went and did it. And, Sorry about that. That's seven. Um, and I went and did it. And, and, and you know, for for me, I got a great satisfaction getting those seven birds to decoy when you know most people would have just looked and gone, "Well, I can't bother with that." Um, a lot of people wouldn't do it. Then again, a lot of people don't have you know nearly fifty thousand acres to shoot on as as I do. So you know, you've got to do what suits you, haven't you? Well, well shot. You got some very good ones. Yeah, it's a good morning. It's uh, 
yeah, for you. <laughs> um, well, that's the way it goes, isn't it? Yeah. We've had enough disasters, haven't we? We have. Your last, your last outing with me was, was a waste of time as well, wasn't it? Two. But, but we've had some good days. <laughs> we have, yeah. We'll make up for it in the summer. Well, yeah, I just think when the silage comes off, I think we'll get a proper, you know, proper go at them. There's a lot more crows here than we're using the yard this morning. So. Mm. Yeah. Come on, off we go. Someone's got jobs to do. At the end of the day, you're shooting wild birds. If you want guaranteed results, you know, pay a lot of money and go pheasant shooting. That, that just, just doesn't really interest me that much. So I'd rather, you know, do this when it doesn't work doesn't work, just come back and do it another day. Mark there securing a mixed bag of Covids, and now the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News, with the CLA Game Fair now less than five weeks away. The UK's Commonwealth Clay Target team has been revealed. BBC Young Sports Personality of the Year Amber Hill will be shooting in Glasgow, as will Aaron Heading, Charlotte Coward and Rory Warlow. Steve Scott returns after winning a Commonwealth medal in 2010. Meanwhile, Scotland's team includes many of the athletes who won golds four years ago, like Jen McIntosh, Neil Sturton and Jonathan Hammond. Read the full team news on the Clay Shooting website. DEFRA's new conservation drive could go hand in hand with shooting. That's the latest message from Basque. New ecological focus areas require farms to devote at least 5% of their land to cover crops, buffer strips, fallow land, nitrogen fixing crops and hedges. Basque's Paul Williamson said game shoots were the perfect way to achieve this and pointed out that shoots plant 90,000 hectares of cover crops and manage 48,000 hectares of hedgerows. More like this in Modern Gamekeeping magazine. Shooters involved in the badger cull have spoken out about the intimidation they received. One contractor, who worked in the Gloucestershire cull zone, said he faced a nightly battle with protesters, who often had better equipment than he did. He said it was like being stalked and he would have to call the police in order to get home. Meanwhile, the debate continues over rolling out the culls more widely or trialling vaccination instead. Natural England has refused an application to control a small number of buzzards. The applicant was a self-employed gamekeeper who had been unable to stop buzzards killing his poults despite trying a number of non-lethal means. The NGO said this was a rare and genuine case of buzzards going on a focused killing spree and that Natural England had been wrong to refuse the licence. There are over 3,000 buzzards in Great Britain. And finally, air gunners now have their own TV show from the makers of The Shooting Show. The air gun show comes out every fortnight and first aired last Thursday. Presented by Matt Manning, it brings together airgun hunting footage of all kinds, augmented by airgun reviews, technical investigations and lifestyle features. Follow the link on screen now to watch the first episode, or tune in this Thursday for episode two. That was the Shooting Show News. The last time we had a look at ballistics, we were having a look at three different 308 rounds of different bullet construction in order to compare and contrast how those different bullet constructions varied the terminal performance. This week, we're gonna be doing something similar, except I'm only gonna be looking at one of those rounds. We're gonna be having a look at the Gecko Plus, which is Gecko's big game round. What we're gonna change this week is instead of just shooting through a soft tissue medium, which we used uh, the ballistic gel to simulate, we're gonna be introducing bone. Now, of course, with a big game round, you're gonna want something that can punch through bone and keep going into the engine room and cause that damage on the other side. If you were to shoot uh, a substantial animal and hit bone with a fragmenting bullet, there's a very high possibility that you would end up with a lot of surface damage, but no deep penetration, which is what you need to bring the animal down. Simulating bone is actually quite difficult. Now the best way to do it is obviously to get fresh bone from an animal that you've shot and embed it inside the gel. That however causes a few problems. Not only do you need a supply of fresh bones, but it will also contaminate the gel, which is something that we want to try and avoid. So what I've done in order to simulate shooting through bone is use some PVC piping, which has been cut into a half moon. Now that may seem a little odd, but in actual fact, the International Committee of the Red Cross used something very similar in their documents on wound ballistics in order to replicate 
uh, the effect of a bullet smashing through bone. So given uh, that it's good enough for them, I've taken that it's good enough for us, I've melted down the gel, inserted my half piece of pipe about an inch in, and that allows us to shoot through a small amount of gel simulating flesh first before it hits the bone and then carries on into the, the rest of the, the block of gel. Now hopefully what we should find is that this big game round should perform almost the same as shooting just through the soft tissue medium. I'm expecting this to punch a nice hole through the plastic pipe and carry on going, giving us very similar penetration to before and also similar weight retention. Now, I would expect the weight retention to have gone down. It seems very unlikely that after hitting something so hard that you wouldn't lose a little bit more of the, the body of the bullet. But we'll see what happens with that. And hopefully, all going well, we should be able to provide a very visual picture like we did last time. And then we can compare some of the measurements that I took and really see how this bullet performs when shooting through something hard like bone. And in the coming weeks, I'm gonna do this same test with the other two bullets from Gecko. And we can see how important bullet construction is when we're taking it that step further and not just shooting through something which is soft. Two four seven three feet per second, according to the box here, fifty meters out. Two four nine four, so that's pretty close, and that's just one round. Uh, to get a proper average, we'd have to fire maybe ten rounds. So that's pretty pleasing. What's on the box is actually what it's producing. Let's go and see what the gel says now. Well, I have to say that this is a very pleasing result. This is almost exactly what I thought it should look like. I do, however, have one small problem, and that is a problem that I've caused, in that I just assumed shooting through the pipe that the penetration would probably only be as much as this full block, given that last time it was only a little bit more. I was wrong, and I have no bullet to show you. It has actually come out the back of the block here, and I can't imagine that it would have gone very far, but enough for me not to be able to find it. So we can do the rest of the analysis, but when it comes to the actual bullet itself, when I shoot the Express um, next week, I will have to redo this experiment, and then at least I'll be able to compare the two side by side. So we'll have to actually leave the, the bullet deformation aside for this analysis, and we'll tackle that a little bit later. But if we have a look at the pipe, we can see that it's completely shattered. In actual fact, I've got some bits in my hand here which were lying on the ground, which have been forced out of the bottom of the block. There's another piece just stuck in the gel here. If we have a look along the wound tract, visually it seems very similar to um, when I shot this just through the gel block. I'll have to take the measurements to see exactly what the story is, but we can see an escalating wound channel right through most of the block and it's carried a lot of the fragments of the pipe through it, which is exactly what we see in reality. If you clip a rib and catch some bone, you end up with those bone fragments sprayed through the, the carcass of the animal. If we look right at the end here, you can see a little circular disc of the pipe. Now that must be where the, the bullet initially hit it, and it's just been dropped and left behind almost right at the end of the block. The performance of the Plus has certainly been very pleasing. We've got excellent consistency as well. If we have a look at the, the front of the block, we've got the same nose break off that we had when we did this experiment the first time. As we follow the wound tract along, we can see some of the, the petals of the copper jacket breaking off about two thirds of the way, and there's another petal just broken off towards the end here. What is going to be very interesting is once we have a comparison side by side. When I do this experiment next time, we're looking at the Express, 
and I repeat this so that we can actually have uh, the end bullet result in our hand and see how that compares to the first time we did this without the pipe. Uh, it's really going to tell the story of this bullet which is designed specifically to perform with this kind of criteria. So all that's left to do now is for me to pack up, go back and get back to the arduous task of melting all this gel down. Well that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been The Shooting Show.